so <clears throat> these uh the case breakers a team of more than 40 law enforcement investigators journalists and military intelligence officers uh claims to have identified the zodiac mm. uh, according to them the zodiac from california uh was a man by the name of gary francis post yes uh who passed away in 2018 uh apparently they uncovered new forensic ev evidence and photos from post's dark room one image features scars on the forehead of post that match scars on a sketch of the zodiac um that's weird yeah see here a lot of people have those creases in their forehead especially right? older guys um i i don't necessarily think they're scars you know they could have just been creases or shadows on the forehead um <clears throat> uh, they also said that um they they uh deciphered letters sent by the zodiac that revealed post as the killer uh in one note the letters of post's full name were removed to reveal an alternate message uh, apparently you've got to know gary's full name in order to decipher the anagrams all right yeah i read that uh, i also read something about his wife or something over to him too yeah they said he he murdered uh, Sherry Joe Bates on October 31st, 1966 in Riverside, California. Uh, she was 18 and was found dead in an alleyway on the Riverside City College campus after her father phoned police to report her missing. Uh, well, that would have been, they're, they're thinking that was his first? Yeah, that's what they're thinking. Because, I mean... Zodiac started what 1969 was the first uh, Zodiac killing? The first one was 1968, uh, 68. December, December 20th, 1968, with David Faraday and Betty Jensen. That's right. Uh, he mm -hmm. used a 22 semi automatic pistol uh, on Herman Road, Benicia, California. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, the Riverside Police Department's homicide cold case unit. Uh, said our homicide cold case unit has determined that the murder of Sherry Jo Bates in 1966 is not related to the Zodiac killer. Uh, we understand the public's interest in these unsolved murders, but all inquiries regarding the Zodiac should be referred to the FBI. Uh, the case breakers mm -hmm. believe Bates was the Zodiac's sixth victim and have tried getting investigators to compare her DNA to that of Post to no avail. Uh, the team said, according to, the, to a 1975 FBI memo to Riverside Police obtained by the team, the agency said Bates was a Zodiac victim. I don't know where they're getting this sixth Zodiac victim um, because there were there was David Faraday and Betty Jensen on the uh, in 1968. Yeah. Michael McGow and Darlene Farron on July 5th, 1969. Uh, Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard, who were tied up and stabbed multiple times with a knife on September 29th, 1969. And then there was Paul Stein, the taxi driver, uh, who was shot in the head with a nine millimeter pistol. Now, so I, I, I know you. a couple of them didn't actually die, but they, they were still his victims. Absolutely. Mary. I wanted to ask you what you thought think about that because to be honest with you my gut tells me there's something wrong with the third victims being attributed to the zodiac and the reason i say that is because largely from what i've researched serial killers tend not to change their mo no they'll change, um, if, they'll change their mo they won't change their signature though that's what, their signature so right. I, I've rarely seen a, a serial killer that stabs and shoots people. It's kind of one or the other. So I kind of wondered to myself if it's possible. I was wondering what was the connection those two had to the Zodiac? Was it anything other than the fact that they were murdered in a lover's lane? Um, well, Brian Hartnell 
Uh, or no, uh, the third one was the uh, tied up and stabbed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard. Um, they, Brian Hartnell actually survived. Mm. And he told yeah. them uh, the guy who killed them was wearing a hood with the uh, Zodiac symbol on his chest and said nope. he was Zodiac. Yeah. Now, I, what I'm wondering about that is, what are your thoughts on the idea? Because, and again, obviously there's uh, exceptions to every rule and generalizations and stuff, but when it comes to these kinds of situations, I, it's, it just doesn't ring true to me when you look at all the other victims associated with the Zodiac, that these are the only two people who were tied up and stabbed multiple times. Uh, it was that's I, so personal, right? That's so up close and personal. It is. That's like, walking up with I, a gun feel, and going blam, right? I feel that it was the Zodiac's attempt to evolve, a failed attempt to evolve. Okay. Um, All right. Because after that, he went back and he shot Paul Stein with his nine millimeter. Um, and I mean, this, uh, the, uh, couple he stabbed multiple times uh, was at Lake Berryessa. Um, and then the uh, when he shot Michael McGow and Darlene Farron, that was in uh, Rock, uh, Blue Rock Springs, Vallejo, California. Yeah. So, I mean, like they're not just... that far away from each other. Just mm -hmm. oh. right over the county line, basically. Yeah. He was pretty much like eh, stabbing and gagging for me kind of thing, it seems like. Yeah. The only reason I ask is because I was taking a look just to see how many known serial killers were active at that time. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> when you look at the number of serial killers acting, even if you just look within the state of California from the late 60s on, the number of serial killers there alone is nutty. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like, oh, my God, like three of them operating in the same location at the same time. It's hard That's to be nuts. like, is it possible yeah. there were two working at the same time? It, it's possible. Um, let's see here. I, I've been preparing this stuff for my uh, Nick, my Zodiac book, book right? so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, son of Sam, he claimed to have uh, stabbed uh, two women in Co-op City as his first murder. Um, okay. And then Edward Edwards, he stabbed Tim Hack, uh, which was his second murder. And most and then, of his were gun related. Right. Uh, his, first, yeah. his first one was Kelly Drew, who he raped and strangled. So it's not unheard of for a serial killer to change their weapons, especially in this lot, this type of serial killer, uh, because as we've seen, Zodiac, Son of Sam, and Edward Edwards share um, almost common personality traits. They yeah. kill in the same manner. Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Makes you wonder if that was always his his initial attempt was to want to bind them up and stab them, but that in most of the cases he was just like, oh, it's, I'll just shoot them. Right. This is yeah. easier, you know. Uh, but the one time he did it that way, one of them almost got away. Right? She st didn't the right. girl start running away and he killed her while she was running? No. Uh, for, or was that a different for Zodiac? That a different one? Yeah. For Zodiac. Uh, Zodiac. Uh, both of them were tied up. That's right. That she was stabbed like eight times in the chest or something. Yeah, she hung on. She hung in there for quite a while and finally died in the hospital. Wow! Oh, wow. Her boyfriend survived. He survived. Uh, it, it was touch and go for a while there, but he eventually survived. Yeah, he's the one that came up with the first sketch of the Zodiac, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like he, he was he was the one who came up with the um the description of the hood over his head and everything. Yeah. Because yeah. when he saw him off in the distance, he was too far away. I guess uh Zodiac's uh 
back was to the sun and there was a tree. So he didn't really get a clear look at the guy. Yeah. Before he had the hood on. So. That's nuts. And, and, go ahead, Josh. Are you injured? Uh, Cause he, uh, from what I understand, uh, a lot of people are saying that they thought it was like a cult thing going on. Wasn't it? Like even the uh, the I read the other day when I was you know doing some research about the the guy that they they're saying is Zodiac. Mm-hmm. The neighbors Ooh. the neighbors now are like that makes perfect sense. Like he was in a cult, leader of a cult, blah blah blah, this and yeah, that, and everything. It, it says here a California woman who lived next door to Post and his wife told Fox News she believes yeah. he's the Zodiac killer. After seeing the evidence collected so far, Gwen, who declined to give her last name, said Post and his wife babysat her as a child in the 1970s and 80s. He would teach her how to shoot firearms several times a week, but was also controlling and abusive towards his wife. Uh, Hans Smith told Fox News he spent 10 years hiding a whistleblower who said he escaped a criminal posse headed by Post. The man who the case breakers only referred to as Will told Smith that Posse roamed uh, California's High Sierra region and that he was groomed into a killing machine. Uh, Will said he witnessed Post burying murder weapons in the woods. Another woman named Michelle said she was common law married to Post's son. She told Fox News she was a victim of harassment by Post and his posse during the relationship that included damaging her car and other incidents. Yeah. So the, yeah, the guy that they are saying is him is, is like has a history of just right. But see what we know about serial killers, especially serial killers who kill in this manner, they're lone wolves. They, uh, they share similar, similar personalities to, uh, like Ted Kaczynski. Yeah. You uh, lo- you lone yeah. Wolf Bombers, you know. Yeah. Um, in fact, usually serial killers like this and Lone Wolf Bombers will have a, a similar upbringing, um, but will deviate slightly at one point or another. Uh, usually they, they all have, uh, they're all arsonists at one point in time or another. Uh, committing fires um, when the, in their youth, um, generally joining the military, um, where they said that uh, Post was an Air Force veteran when he received medical checkups for a gun incident at a hospital located 15 minutes away from the Bates murder scene. A wristwatch was paint, which with paint splatter on it was collected at the murder scene and is thought to have been worn by the killer post painted homes for more than four decades the team said in addition detectives found a heel print from a military style boot which matched the same style and size of those found in other zodiac crime scenes and of post um now i don't think the Zodiac would have been an Air Force veteran. Right. It's likely he was probably Army, Navy, Army. Marine. Um, they, they think he was Navy because of the type of pants he was seen wearing uh, when he abducted one woman and her, and her baby, uh, along with the boots and the uh, cryptography. Though that's a known Navy uh, skill. Mm -hmm. Uh, air force veterans or people join the air force because they don't want to be in the middle of the action they don't uh, cannot see an air force veteran actually looking into someone's eyes and shooting them Mm. Uh, or stabbing them or stabbing them for that matter army navy marines yeah not not air force uh, Air Force would be more like along the lines of Ted Kaczynski, uh, even though I don't believe he was in the military. Uh, 
he has those traits of someone who would likely have been in the air force and then turned into a, uh, a bomber. Mm. They want to be far away from the action. They want to see it unravel um, from a distance. They don't even want to go about planning the bombs. They'd rather like mail them or something like that. Have they, given, nice. have they given the kind of that kind of background information on post yet? Like what his childhood was like, and or have they they haven't said anything about him? No, they, they haven't. Um, let me see if I can find anything else on him. Yeah, only thing I've heard is you know about like the cult stuff. He was really controlling of his wife. He he had a cult. Um, the daughter and the all things stuff like that. They've not, I don't think they've said anything about his childhood. I don't think they really know anything about Yeah, the, it's like they know it's him, but they don't know much about him yet. Yeah. Right? We're still trying right. to do that background work. Which which I was thinking, though, like when they said Colt, I'm like, was he having people do the work for him, though, after people spotted his face? Mm. I mean, yeah. Because he was only, when was, when was the last time they found anything Zodiac? Uh, last year. Last, last year, year. I... Uh, a group, a uh, a group used a computer software in order to decipher the uh, let me see which can't remember which uh, cipher it was that they tracked. Yeah, because I don't I don't think he's killed in a long time, has he? Not that we know of. Not not as the Zodiac, yeah. anyway, or at least right. that he's taken, taken credit for. But Maybe he thought they were getting too close, so he dropped the Zodiac. Might have switched things up. Unlikely. Maybe, or took a significant cooling off period? I, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. He would have continued to kill as the Zodiac, because that's his signature. Right. Um, but he might not, and as we know, he claimed significantly high uh, murders uh, in his letters to authorities. Uh, he just didn't say which ones were his. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the 480 cipher. Does that sound right? I think what gets me here with, with especially with with things like Zodiac, the, the newest revelations about Samuel Little and the the sheer volume of people he murdered over the years, was it like ninety-three people or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Sort of makes you go, what how and I know that from doing some of the research, I understand that a lot of the reasons up till now that a lot of cases haven't been linked is right. due to the fact that for so long local law enforcement was constantly in competition with federal law enforcement yeah right and yeah. with each other right everybody wanted um the 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 i'm gonna get them we're gonna get them and we're not telling you anything yeah, that they, we know they wanted the you credit might get them before me. and yeah. it seems to me looking at that i'm like man if everybody had always just worked together and been like let's share info it yeah. makes you wonder how how fast some of these people might have been caught before her Right. Yeah, but it makes me wonder, you know, those people who are like, oh, yeah, the guy <laughs> who they arrested who lived next door to me, definitely. Right. Makes right. me wonder those times where they're arrested as one killer, but they're actually another. And see, here's the thing. Uh, well, first, back to the ciphers. The 408 cipher was solved by Donald and Betty Harden on July 30th, yeah. 1969. They're <laughs> teachers. Uh, the 340 cipher was the one that was solved on December 5th, 2020. Okay. But, um, and it was solved by a computer program. Oh, wow. Yeah. You'd, you'd think, though, now. It's just but like, most, like... most serial killers, when, when they're apprehended, people aren't like, oh, yeah, that guy was definitely a serial killer. I'm I'm yeah, surprised no, we missed true. it. Yeah, right. they're, normally, they're normally like, 
How? I was at his what? barbecue on right. Sunday. What? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Most serial killers, you're not going to think, oh, this guy's a serial killer. Sure. No, they, there, they, there's they blend the, in beautifully. There's the exceptions, you know, like um, Hillside Stranglers and. Yes. Uh, yeah. People like that. But those are more mass murderers mm -hmm. or spree yeah. killers. That's true. Where, yeah. Whereas serial killers are more more reserved they can blend in they want to be the least the least likely suspect mm -hmm. right yeah yeah that makes sense um, like I, I mean i'm like like i feel like zodiac is like the last of the like famous unsolved ones though ain't he yeah besides like i don't know <laughs> besides Jack know, the Ripper, think, but... yeah there you go yeah. Oh, I think I think Jack the Ripper's been solved. <laughs> and well, and actually, to, to that point, so do most of the people I know who've read the book and or listened to it. Awesome. That's, they agree. Uh, that's great. Was talking to one of my friends about it. It was like, yeah, yeah, uh, that I'm there 100 <laughs> percent. I appreciate that. That's uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, now back to the idea that the Zodiac uh, was likely an arsonist in his youth or have had the lone wolf arsonist mentality like Ted Kaczynski. John Douglas said in his book, The Anatomy of Motive, uh, arsonists are internalizers. Just like bombers, they remain one step removed. The internalizer is a loner, an asocial personality who has to put emotional and physical distance between himself and everyone else. They can be a rapist or a one-on-one -on -one killer. But if he is, the victim is going to be someone obviously smaller, weaker, and or more vulnerable than he is, or someone he doesn't deal with on a challenging or equal level. He'll choose his victim and the circumstances of the crime very carefully so that he can launch a blitz-style attack uh, from the back, neutralizing the victim or rendering her unconscious or defenseless before he has to deal with her on a human, as a human being. Internalizers are among the most cowardly of all. Um, and also, according here, arsonists are primarily the act of white men um, who are usually police or fire department buffs, uh, late 20s to mid 30s, long standing interest in fires going back to childhood. As a child, he would have also displayed cruelty to animals or other small children, uh, possibly a bedwetter, often volunteer firefighter may have washed out a uh, few friends in school oddball disruptive underachiever as partial compensation for low self-esteem he would be very concerned with his personal appearance want to put up a good front those he worked with or socialized would notice him sometimes going to a, into a rage with little provocation quick to blame others refuse to take blame or admit fault interested in hardcore porn, loss of job or loss of love as a stressor to begin the fire starter. Now, I know Zodiac isn't known as a fire starter, but he does share some of those personality traits. Plus, he could have in his youth um, and right. left that behind, right? Yeah. So right. many of them seem to. Yeah. It's like uh, Dahmer. Like, he was a weird kid. Like, all, like everybody that knew him said, through high yeah. school like he only had like maybe like a handful of friends or whatever it was if that you know the set the saddest thing i read about him was written by robert wrestler in his book uh whoever fights monsters and yeah. he wrote something to the effect of when well, he sat down with Dahmer multiple times but one of the last times he sat down with Dahmer, he was like when he shuffled into the room i didn't see this heinous murderer anymore i saw this scared little kid who was like, like no idea what happened and, and when he Dahmer sat down in front of him he didn't and and uh robert wrestler maintained until he passed away of course that uh Dahmer should never have been in prison and if he he should have been in a, a mental hospital right from yeah. the get go and if he was he'd still be alive 
Um, but putting him in prison was detrimental to his life. Now, I know there's lots of people who'd hear me say that and be like, oh, poor Dahmer. But, Mm-mm. you know, it, it, you, you have to have some empathy, I think, for, for anyone who's suffering on any level. And he seemed to be a guy who suffered so much up here. Yeah. Uh, not in any way to excuse how he acted out on it, but the, you just go, he should have been in a, a hospital. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't think Dahmer was, you know, he tried so many times to uh, change, not, not to get away with his crimes, but because mm. he didn't want to be a serial killer. He didn't want to have these, this creature inside him underneath the surface. You know, yep. that, that's not saying that what he did wasn't bad you know, or that he shouldn't yeah. have paid, but I don't see him in along the same lines as other serial killers. No, uh, like Zodiac, like, I feel like Dahmer's more along the lines of like the, do, did you guys ever hear the weepy voice killer? No. You heard mm-hmm. in this, oh, it's creepy. If you look it up, man, there's, there's audios of this guy calling 911 and being like, I've just killed somebody. You have to stop me. And he's crying the whole time. He's like, they call him the weepy voice killer. And uh, it was like, it's super creepy listening to it, but you can tell that this is a guy who's controlled by his compulsions and no longer able to stop himself. And it's like, he's begging for help, you know? So, but I find that, I don't feel that with Zodiac Zodiac. He was proud. There was a pride to the crimes he committed. I mean, if you're writing letters, even in cryptogram to newspapers Mm -hmm. and police, you're, you're playing a game. I mean, that's along the lines, more along the lines of Berkowitz or, you know, right. Um, And speaking of Berkowitz um, in my paper for my, my criminology final paper, I did it on my Zodiac profile. I let, I let. Yeah, it was uh, great. Oh, it was great. <laughs> it was great. Thank you. Um, and part of it, I put many believe that Zodiac was a sexually motivated offender, including John Douglas. However, this is where I would have to disagree. Edwards and Berkowitz weren't sexually motivated offenders. They were thrill killers. Kaczynski and Mavey were mission oriented killers. As we've noticed, the Zodiac shares qualities with all four of these men. So what is a sexually motivated offender? Sexually motivated offender is someone who commits a sexual homicide. Crime Classification Manual 3rd Edition gives a clear definition to what can be considered a sexual homicide and offers the different types. Uh, Sexual homicide involves a sexual element or activity as a basis of this in the sequence of acts leading to death, performance and meaning of this sexual element vary with offender. The act may range from actual rape involving penetration, either pre or post-mortem, to a symbolic sexual assault, such as insertion of foreign objects into the victim's body orifices. A sexually based motivation is driven by the sexual needs, desires of the offender. There may be, there may or may not be overt sexual contact reflected in the crime scene. Um, Robert Graysmith said that uh, his sub, he believed Arthur Lee Allen was a zodiac. That's the, that was the one in the movie, right? Was based yes. on Robert Graysmith's book? Yeah. yeah. Now, where I, I'm going to completely disagree with this. Mm. Uh, Arthur Lee Allen was a known child molester and didn't have any known relationships with adult women. It would be quite a leap to say that he received any type of sexual gratification from anything involving adults. Yeah. Including the murder of them. Uh, we can't forget that Zodiac was an attention seeker. It, he yeah. wanted fame and nor- notoriety. This is something that child molesters do not want. Do at not? All. Well, that's the exact no, opposite yeah. of what they yeah. want. Uh, when it comes to sexual <laughs> homicide, the unsub generally selects their victims based on his fantasies. The plan or fantasy constructed earlier may call for a victim who meets certain criteria 
and many murderers have been known to seek out a victim who is exactly right for the fantasy, according to Burgess Douglas and Ressler. Um, and then I just go, I go on, I eventually get into my profile of them. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it was Arthur Lee Allen. Uh, he was the furthest person who could have possibly been the Zodiac. Even though he meets yeah. some of the background information, the fact that he was a child molester completely negates him from the running. And yeah. that's what I mean. I think he's most definitely a ch child molester, could even be a child murderer, but he's not the Zodiac. I, right. I don't think that those mm -hmm. two just don't even, they don't even coincide really. No, not at all. No. Like, it, if you're, if he's a child molester, he, you'd be finding kids, not adults. Right. Yeah. Right. Especially, exactly. you know. Yeah. Just like in uh, Douglas's book, um, The Killer Across the Table, mm -hmm. he, he uh, talked about two, I believe, two serial killers who actually um, killed children after they molested them or raped them or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's accord, yeah. according to my paper uh, I'll go ahead and read off my profile in order to identify the Zodiac investigators need to view the unsub under a different classification to help guide their profile as stated earlier I believe the Zodiac was a combined attention seeking mass murderer and a thrill killer serial killer it should also be noted that given his communications through letters and taunting of police, as well as willingness to cause chaos, as seen when he threatened a bus of school children, Zodiac should also be classified as a hedonistic type thrill killer. A hedonistic type thrill killer is someone who derives pleasure from killing. For the Zodiac, this likely wouldn't be about sexual pleasure, more like a high, um, mm -hmm. a drug high or adrenaline high. He wanted uh, to be famous. He wanted people right. to know who he was right. without knowing who he was. He, he wanted his next fix. Mm -hmm. uh, he likely used the correspondence with police as a way to extend the duration of his high. This would be not unlike those who smoke pot, often smoke menthol cigarettes afterwards in order to maintain the buzz. Right. Uh, particularly like Newports, uh, anything with a menthol. Um. This means but, we need to try to understand what type of person becomes a thrill seeker. What were you going to say, Josh or Jared? Like, I was wondering if he might like go back to the scene and be the people behind the yellow tape going, oh, what well, happened? Likely. It's yeah, very possible, most likely, yeah. yeah. That's uh, what I figured. Uh, this means we need to try to understand what type of person becomes a thrill seeker. Addiction normally has a psychological explanation. Psychologists focus on abnormalities within the individual and examine personality disorders. Their su supposition is that deviation indivi deviating individuals have deviating personalities and that subconscious motives drive people to deviates. Yeah. When reading through the list of personality disorders and their signs, symptoms in the DSM-5, we can narrow down those the Zodiac may have had down to just a few. Among these disorders is narcissistic, borderline, schizoid, and antisocial personality yeah. disorders. A schizoid personality disorder is a pattern of detachment from social relationships and a restricted range of emotional expression. Antisocial is a pattern of, of disregard for and violation of the rights of others. Borderline is a pattern of instability in interpersonal relationships, self-image, and effects and marked impulsivity. Narcissistic personality disorder is a pattern of grandiosity, need for ad uh, admiration, and a lack of empathy. Uh, any of those ring a bell when it comes to the Zodiac? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the reason yes. that the Zodiac can be said to have any one of these disorders can be seen in his crimes. The act of taunting the police with his letters demonstrates a pattern of grandiosity and a need for admira admiration, as well as a lack of empathy. The act of binding the victims at Lake Berryessa before stabbing them is indicative of a pattern of disregard for and violation of 
the rights of others. This could also be said about other murders as well, as and perhaps especially with the abdication or abduction of Kathleen Johns. She was the one who he uh, he flagged her down, told her her uh, lug nuts were loose, uh, went back, set offered to tighten them for her. Uh, he went back and actually loosened them, and her wheel fell off going down the road. He stopped and picked her and her baby up and. He told her she was going to kill her. She ended up jumping from the vehicle. Yep. Uh, the, one. the reduction in time between murders as well as the murder of Paul Stein is indicative of a pattern of instability and marked impulsivity. The wearing of the mask and disguising himself during the commission of his crimes, as well as the use of a firearm, is indicative of a detachment from social relationships. Uh, the causes for these disorders are generally not considered to be genetic. In fact, the majority of those who live with personality disorders do so as a result of being abused or neglected as a child. When you combine this with the theory that the Zodiac was likely orphaned as a child, it begins to paint quite the profile. We talked about this in the previous video where Zodiac might have been uh, adopted uh, because uh, other serial killers along his lines like Son of Sam and Edward Edwards uh, were mm -hmm. both adopted or lived in orphanages. Um, many individuals who feel abandoned by their biological parents and grow up or spend any time at all in foster care experience attachment issues. This can be attributed to John Bulbsley's attachment theory. Attachments are formed soon after birth. When infants bond with their mothers, failing to develop proper attachment may cause people to fall prey to any number of psychological disorders. Uh, we often see this among serial killers such as Ed Kemper and Eileen Warnos uh, as to what led them to begin killing. Um, those who murder others also exhibit neurological defects. These defects are predominant in the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is part of the human brain, which gathers input from all other areas to produce complex cognition, judgments, and long-term plans. These individuals also exhibit no activity in the limbic system of the brain as well, which is involved in the instinctive behaviors, deep-seated emotions, and basic impulses such as sex, anger, pleasure, and general survival. Those who exhibit these types of neurological deficits are considered psychopaths. Psychopathy is marked as an abnormal lack of empathy to the extent that some even enjoy seeing others suffer. Um, so given all this information, the profile of the Zodiac uh, would be quite obvious. The Zodiac was likely a white male in his early 30s at the time of the murders. Yeah. Who grew up in or spent time in foster care as a child. He likely set fires as a juvenile and may even have experienced some type of cranial damage during adolescence. There's no doubt that he was born with a neurological predisposition to exhibit psychopathy. He would have been a loner and had very few friends, if any, interpersonal relationships and would have likely been self-conscious with a need for to be admired. Being that his crimes were committed on the weekends, he quite probably worked a regular Monday through Friday job. He would have felt also kept to himself and been overlooked by anyone he came into contact with. This is someone who wouldn't have any kind of criminal record as an adult. He likely drove a four-door sedan and had a military background. Huh. I was wondering if um, in John Douglas's uh, <clears throat> in John Douglas's profile, when he talked about um, it being a sexual crime, one of the times I heard him talking, he was talking about how sometimes the crime itself isn't sexual, but the perpetrator <laughs> will sometimes uh, live it out as a sexual fantasy. Yeah, uh, Son of Sam did that. And the, the more you describe Zodiac, the less I feel that that's likely because there's something, there's well, something, and I noticed this in, in a lot of these cases, there's something very embarrassing about the sexual aspect of it for them. Right. Um, that that idea of going back to the crime scene and masturbating, reliving the 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 crime over again, th this felt more like somebody who was loving the attention 
and would probably have been at almost every crime scene oh, in the yeah. aftermath, either helping or offering suggestions or helping in search parties or anything like that. He was probably yeah. that dude. Yeah, the whole time I was like, thinking. I did this. Right, Jared, I before, did this. before you leave, uh, did you want to uh, add any final th- of your final thoughts? Uh, I honestly believe that it it's most definitely probably the guy that they're saying it is. I don't know. It just, I, I feel like he, he liked attention too. Um, so I, I honestly believe that he's so yet. I think, I think a lot more is going to come out and, you know, they said that his wife turned over uh, some kind of evidence to those guys. Maybe she found pictures or it's hard tapes. to know. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it's it, you hard know, to know without knowing you, what they got, you you find yourself looking for it every day. Like anything new, anything new, anything new. Right. But, yeah. But I I honestly don't think Zodiac would have ever gotten married. I really don't. I didn't think so either. Yeah. Um, that's. I, I don't think he's uh, he's got the interpersonal skills to make a relationship like that, especially last that long. If he's right. still married. Yeah, I find that that one a little bit of a stretch. The other right. thing I noticed too was uh, hang I don't on, just, remember. A, just yeah. a minute, Jared. You said you had to head out. You got to head to work, yep. right? Yes. Right. Well, uh, right. Ben and I will continue this, and uh, feel free to share your thoughts in the next video. All right. Uh, I will see you guys next time. All, all right, right, buddy. We'll see you next week. Have a good work. You too. All right. All right. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, I was just saying. Uh, um forgot where i was <laughs> uh interpersonal relationships for the other day oh yeah it, i i i find i find it hard to believe that somebody like that would be able to keep that long a relationship um going and without that other person having any idea until now yeah that that this was a possibility the only way i could see uh him actually getting married or keeping any kind of a relationship with that uh, like that would be total admiration by his significant other, mm. uh, complete and utter um, reliance upon him. Um, she would likely be someone who basically worships him. Right. Uh, that could be why he he hasn't. We haven't heard from him in so long he, as well. Um, mm. So I mean, it, it's possible that he might have gotten married, but she wouldn't be one to say after he died uh, that she thought he was the Zodiac or anything like that. She would be to her deathbed. My man was right. Yeah. My man was a great guy. Um, in fact, they would likely never fight. And uh, if they did, it would likely be one sided his side uh, because she would be more. Um, almost like the wife of an abuser sure yeah um protective in in a in a in a way that that's almost uncontrollable right at that point to right the the other thing i read too that when i was looking through you know whatever i could find on zodiac and some of the victim statements and things that you can read online and stuff and another article i found also said the same thing None of the victim statements who described him could I find anything about scars on his forehead. No. Like nothing. Right. And that's a big piece of what these guys are saying. They match the scars from one of the diagrams. And I'm like, but I don't remember them saying anything about him having scars specific. Right. Uh, There was one other uh, theory out there. Um, on who the Zodiac was. Uh, I read the book on it, or I listened to the audio book for it a few years ago while I was mowing lawns. Uh, it's called The uh, uh, Most Danger- Dangerous Animal of All, I Ooh. believe. Let me double check that. This guy, he was adopted, and he thought his birth father was the Zodiac because uh, he was watching wow. a documentary one day, and they sh- uh, it was on the Zodiac, and they showed the same... Uh, sketch that these guys are using uh and they're like 
or his son came into the room and said, Dad, that looks like you. And he was going through uh, some of his files or whatever and started researching uh, his uh, parentage and came across this guy who looked almost just like him, uh, looked just like the Zodiac from the sketch. Mm. Uh, let me find it here. there were a lot of killers acting at that time man yeah especially in and around that area yeah um Okay. I've gotten so many I've got so many audio books. Oh, because, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh going through an actual library trying to find an actual li- you're going to need the Dewey Decimal System before you know it. Right. Library cards, right? <laughs> um, they, they did a uh, documentary on it a few years ago on FX. Uh, was, it, was it this guy who uh, just started basically researching the case himself and gathering every piece of evidence he could find that could have implicated his father as the Zodiac? Yeah, yeah. The, most yeah dangerous, this the most dangerous animal of all. Um, soon after his birth mother contacted him for the first time at the age of 39 adoptee Gary L. Stewart decided to search for his biological father his quest would lead him to a horrifying truth and force him to reconsider everything he thought he knew about himself and his world Um, let's see what was his dad's name it's not listed here, but all the evidence he presented and everything. At, at first, I was like, okay, okay, this this is sounding like the Zodiac. Even to, uh, apparently, his dad left him in the hallway of this apartment building without his mom knowing because he was tired of having a son, having a kid oh, when he was just man. an infant. But by the time I got to the end of the book, I was like, this fits too neatly. Yeah. And when I watched the documentary on it, uh, at the end of the documentary, the producers were like, okay, this is what we found. He was not in these places at the time you said he was. Uh, there's no way he could have been the Zodiac. So no, I mean, he, he looked like the Zodiac, the, the Zodiac sketch, but, you know, it is just likely this guy trying to get his 15 minutes of fame. And I wonder if it's not the same with the post guy. I mean, you know, it's hard to it's hard to say because it's a group of law enforcement officials and former law enforcement officers. Mm-hmm. So you kind of want to be like they've got a certain area of expertise there, but it just it doesn't feel like they solved the case to me. Right. I don't think there's enough evidence to prove at least that they've shared anyway. Right. Uh, who knows? And all and the fact that they say. Um... They've uncovered new forensic evidence and photos from post darkroom. Okay, where are these photos? Where's this yeah. evidence? You know, if you if you thought it was that solid, you'd be sharing it. You know, unless yeah. you know you're like me and want to save it for a book. You know, but... for a book, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that they're coming forward now, instead of waiting to actually publish it, uh, tells me that they don't have plans on doing that. They're just trying to get their 15 minutes of fame. Um, I I think they're barking up the wrong tree, honestly. I agree. I agree. I I think uh, uh, unless unless they're able to present evidence uh, that that really does physically link him to it, uh, it feels like just another, you know, one of the other guys, you know, just, yeah, this is a possibility. Um, And you know, and no, no, not necessarily any better a possibility than anybody that's been put forward already. 
Right. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think we're starting to go into circles. Uh, you want to share some of your final thoughts? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think, um, well, I think like everything, I, I don't think this is the end of this conversation. You know, I have a feeling, especially over the next number of years, uh, especially knowing that there's people who are actively, you know, investigating this still, I, I think we're going to, we're going to hear more. And I, I think we're going to hear that post isn't yeah. who they thought he was. Right. Uh, I, I feel the same way. I, I feel there's no way the Zodiac could have been a guy like Post from what little we know about him. Uh, Zodiac, I, I highly doubt he was in the Air Force for one. He yeah. has too much of a lone wolf personality. Uh, yeah, he wants to distance himself, but not take himself completely away from the crimes. He wants to, yeah. he's more of a blitz style attacker mm -hmm. rather than someone who's just sitting in a chair somewhere and mails things off and yeah exactly and the fact that gary post uh they said he ran around with a posse zodiac he's too much he of a loner. loner yeah he's too much of a loner to do that yeah and like we said that uh once it comes out who zodiac actually was i feel his neighbors his friends his relatives are going to be like there's no possible way that could be him. He could yeah. be, or they're going to be like, I, I can't believe it. How did we miss this all this time? Yeah, uh, totally. I, even with like son of Sam and Edward Edwards and uh, Ted Kaczynski, people were, couldn't really believe it because they were just Edward Edwards. He went to prison for a while. Yeah. And he came out. He wrote a book. He toured the country promoting his book. Yeah. Uh, because he turned his life around, but then he ended up killing more people after that. Yep. Um, so I mean, I, I I honestly think they're just barking up the wrong tree to get their 15 minutes of fame. I agree. I think uh, I think uh, w this one needs to keep being investigated. Right. So if you guys know anyone who's writing a book or anything, uh, feel free to get a hold of Ben Hunter on Audible uh, through ACX for your narrating you. needs. Absolutely. Um, Available. Check out my book, Jack the Ripper, Please Man do. Behind the Blade. Spectacular um, book. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, if you guys have anything to add, leave it in the comments below. Uh, we hope you'll join us next weekend. Uh, what are are we talking about cryptids next weekend, or are we continuing with serial killers? Uh, I'm I'm open to either. Uh, there was some interesting stuff with the serial killers, but it might might be nice to try something a little bit different. Maybe we go cryptids next week. Okay. Um, I, I actually for this week we had originally planned on talking about Bigfoot. Uh, so oh. so I think we'll move that to next week. We'll talk um here sounds on, good to me here on the channel we're not just about serial killers and mass murderers and no. the likes we're about all things dark and creepy and psychology mysterious. And mysterious and just things that boggle the mind so join us yeah. next time when we talk about bigfoot uh the yeti uh the grass man the Jersey skunk devil. ape skunk yeah. ape <laughs> Um, totally. I think Jersey Devil is scheduled for. That's a totally December. different thing. Yeah. Well, we got to do that one separately, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, thanks for uh, tuning in, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.